y'all. Let's crack. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 12 by 12 wood panels that I got at the Dollar Tree for $3. It is really a good quality and it is ready to paint on. I'm going to use some gel stain. I got mine at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. Some Waverly white chalk paint. Some acrylic paint in the color Lemonade. And also the color Territorial Beige. I'm going to use my Jot Permanent Markers. I have two different widths here. They came from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using one of these spouncers that I also got at the Dollar Tree. And finally, I'm going to be using some white graphite paper that I ordered from Amazon. The first thing I'm going to do is stain this entire panel, the front and the sides, with my gel stain. I'm just going to use a baby wipe. I got these at the Dollar Tree real inexpensively, and the good thing about staining with baby wipes is once you're finished, you don't have a brush to clean. You can just toss it in the trash. And just make sure you let this dry for several hours or even several days. So I'm taking this tube of ribbon, and I'm just going to use the outside of it to trace on about a half of a circle that's about four inches wide and I drew a line right down the center of my piece as well. Then I took out a piece of paper that was about three inches wide and about seven inches long and I just cut out a simple shape of a flower petal. I'm going to line up the center of my petal with the center of my board where I drew my guideline and I'm just going to trace out my petals and then I will just work my way around to the right and left drawing petals onto my board. And if you make a mistake, it's real easy to erase it with a white eraser and just correct it. And now I'm going to tilt it up and let you see what I have on my board so far. Now I'm just going to take the word welcome that I wrote out in my own handwriting on a sheet of paper and I taped it to the top of my frame and then I'm going in with my white graphite paper and I'm just going to trace back over my word and then it puts the imprint right down on the board. Here you can see the word welcome complete. Now in hindsight, I wish I had put it down a little bit lower, but I didn't catch it. So next time I will be more careful of that. And of course I'm using my Jot Permanent Marker and I'm just tracing that word out. I used the wider one. And then for the flower, I'm using the, th the fine point one and I'm just going to trace out my entire flower across the board. And honestly, you do not have to be too careful at this time. Now I'm going to use my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to start filling in on my petals. I do get a little heavy handed at first, but I go back and I wipe some of it off and I just use my finger to smudge things. I want it to look kind of old and chippy. Just a little bit antique. And working with chalk paint is so easy. If you get too much, well, you just take some off you can use a wet rag and you can remove some. It's just real easy to work with on this type of medium. And this is why you didn't have to be too careful as you're going around and tracing on your petals. Because I actually had to come in and add some more black to the flower later. And here's what we have so far. Then I'm just going to come in with this lemonade yellow and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on, I'm gonna wipe some off, take some out. And when I get it like I want it, I'm going to come in with my territorial beige, use my spouncer, and I'm spouncing little dots around the circle. And then I'll soften it again with that lemonade yellow color until we get it just like we want it. And I'm not an artist, but I just like to dabble in it once in a while. And I like how this turned out. Summer will be here before we know it. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos four days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. 
For this project, I'm going to use this cutting board that I got at Goodwill Outlet for 59 cent. I think it'll be perfect for the sign that my son asked me to make. This wording that I cut out with my Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut though, we did a video showing lots of ways that you can do lettering for your projects. I'll put a link to that down below if you're interested. Some furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree. A sawtooth hanger some white acrylic paint. I'm not using chalk paint because this is going to be hanging on a door and some Mod Podge. So the first thing I did was take my sanding block and I got as much of that paint off as I could. Since I'm gonna be painting this, I wanted to make sure that it didn't show through. Now I'm going to use my furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain my sign on the front, the back, and all the sides. Now you could paint this, but I'm going to be doing a reverse lettering effect on this and I was afraid that it would pull up the paint if I used paint, so I decided to stain it. But you can do it however you would like. Now that we have our board stained, I'm going to transfer my lettering to this. I just use a piece of transfer tape to lift it all up and then I'm going to center it on my board and press it down really good. Make sure that you use one of your scrapers to get that down because you don't want it to be lifting when you start to paint it. Then we're just going to remove our transfer tape and now we're going to paint this with our white paint. I am using a sponge brush and I'm just kind of dabbling this on. I just kind of pounce up and down because I didn't want my paint to bleed up under my letters. Now for my second coat, I will use a brush and smooth this out, but for that top coat, I'm just going to spounce it on. We're gonna give this two good coats and then we'll leave it to dry. Now that our paint is dry, we get to remove our letters, and y'all, I love this part. It always comes out so nice and crisp. This is how I did my signs that I sold at craft fairs, and so many people would comment on it and how cool it is, and a lot of people would even ask me how I did it. It's so easy, and it always looks so nice. But if you don't have a cutting machine, you could also use the stickers from a craft store or you could even freehand this and it would turn out just as cute. Once we get all of our letters removed, I'm just going to take a sanding block and go over this and rough it up. My son and his wife love that farmhouse look, so I wanted to give this an aged look. To add a hanger to this, I'm just going to find the center of the back and then I use a pokey tool to kind of mark my holes and then a hammer to hammer it on. Since this is going to be hanging on a door, I wanted to seal it, so I'm just using some Mod Podge. I'll give it a good coat on the front, the back, and the sides and leave it to dry. And with that, this project is finished. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this wreath, I'm going to use one of these wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. It is 14 inches. And I'm also going to be using one of the smaller wreath forms that are eight inches across. We will just need one of those. I'm going to use this leftover piece of a garbage can that I got at the Dollar Tree. I used it in a project recently and today we'll use it for this one. I'm going to use this five and a half inch deco mesh in the yellow color. I got mine at Hobby Lobby and it does take about three rolls for this particular wreath. I'm going to be using some yellow chenille stems. It will take about 24 or so, maybe a little more. And I'm going to use these zip ties. I use about 11 of them. I got them in a multi-pack at the Dollar Tree one time. I'm using some of this rope that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's the larger diameter. I'm going to need a small piece of this scrap burlap fabric. 
This metal bead that I got at Hobby Lobby, they do sell a version of it at the Dollar General as well, and it's a lot cheaper. And finally, I'm going to use my tin snips, my floral wire, and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my tin snips and I'm going to cut off this band at the top. Then I'll just cut up the middle from the side here, finish cutting off the band at the top. And now I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces and piece it across the back here. I'll just use floral wire to attach it to the side of my wreath form. And here I'm just showing you that I attached it with floral wire at each of the crossbars where it meets the wire in the back and also halfway in between. Now I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut some mesh. I ended up cutting 48 for the first row that are 10 inches wide. I cut 36 for the second row and they are 12 inches long. And then finally for the third row, I cut 11 that are 10 inches long. And then I took 21 of my chenille stems and I cut them in half to attach the mesh to the wreath. For this wreath, I'm going to use a really simple technique. I'm going to fold my pieces in half and just gather them at the bottom to make petals for my flower. And at first, I attach down to the wreath the first petal using a chenille stem right there at the crossbar. And I'm going to be attaching it to the second ring from the outer edge. And that's when I decided that one would not be enough in the chenille stems. So I'm going to fold and gather another petal and I'm going to attach it down into that same chenille stem. And for the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to gather it at the bottom and then I'm going to gather the second one as well and go ahead and use my chenille stem and put down two at the same time. Each time I'm just going through and doing the same thing, making sure that my petals are beside each other and not on top of each other. So that will give a nice fluffy wreath. And now let's put on the next one the same way. Right now I'm just establishing the pattern for the wreath that I want to do. And here you can see what I have so far. And I'm finally placing one on the corner post. And so I end up with one on each post and three in between. So now we have our pattern. One on each post and three in between each section. And now I'm just going to go in and start placing in three of those chenille stems in between that section and one on the center post. And then I'm going to go back and start placing in my petals. The good part about this wreath is you will have no exposed mesh to the outside of your wreath. You will have all finished edges. And I trim off the ragged edges on the inside for each of my pieces. Then I'm going to cut off my chenille stems after I twist them a few times. And then I'll just twist the little post down into the wreath, any raw parts that stick out. This is a non-frayed edge wreath. Everything will be nice and neat when you're finished. Now let's go in and place all of our chenille stems on the rest of the wreath, doing three in each section. It doesn't matter if they move around because once you place them in, they will hold their shape in between. And of course, one at each post. And there's what it looks like once I placed in all the petals in all of the chenille stems so far. Now let's start the second set of our petals. I'm going to use the inner ring of our original wreath form and I'm going to twist in three chenille stems in each section. I'm not going to put one on the post, so I'll space them out just a little bit differently. But I'm going to go around the wreath form and place three in each of the sections. I'm going to be using 12 inch petals that you may recall on this second set of petals. And we're going to attach them the same way that we did the outer ring, but we'll be using 12 inch petals and three on each section. And as I complete a section of three, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten my chenille stems, trim off the ragged edges, trim off my chenille stems, place them down the sides of each section, and just kind of work as I go, filling in each part. 
For my last row of puffs, I'm only going to use one petal at a time. I'm going to use zip ties to attach it down to the part of our garbage can here. I'm just going to trim up that end and trim up my zip tie each time as I go. And I used a total of 11 zip ties and 11 poofs as I did this intersection. This is mostly to cover up all of the little bottoms of the section in front of it. So it's not that critical and we don't have to have double sets of petals, one petal per zip tie, 11 zip ties. And I just came in about two inches all the way around. I just mainly made sure that my poofs covered the chenille stems on the second set. And here you can see the back, you can see the 11 placed in a circular pattern. Everything is nice and neat, and this is what our wreath looks like so far. For the center part of my flower, I'm going to use that small wreath form, 8 inches, that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use hot glue and attach my burlap fabric all the way around. And once it sets, I'm going to trim it off at the back, make it look nice and neat. Then we'll use some more hot glue and attach it right down into the center of our flower. Now I'm going to use my rope as extra trim all the way around, just again using my hot glue. We'll trim that off. For the bee, I'm going to take a chenille stem and I'm going to place some glue down in the bottom of it. Then I'm going to flood the top of the chenille stem with a little more glue. Then I'm going to take some medical tape and just place it right down on top and let everything set. And then I'm just going to use the chenille stem and work it down through the mesh and attach it to my wreath form. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all.